If you have ever been at that moment in your life or your business where you're feeling stuck, like you just kind of are revving and revving and can't get out of your own way, you can't get any traction forward. It's kind of like you're on the edge. You're on the edge of something, but you feel really stuck. And that's why I'm so excited to have Kat Sturtz here today. She is an expert in marketing, but she's real. what she's really an expert in is helping people get unstuck in their business lives. So I love her. I love her. She's the, uh, the purgatory relief coach for people who think marketing is hell. And I know that many, many, many entrepreneurs are in the description that I'm talking about today. So Kat, thank you for coming today and helping us learn what it means to be on the edge and how to move past the edge. Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks, Jen, for inviting me. This is a favorite topic of mine because we are all there at some point and some of us more frequently than others. I'm not immune to it even after all of these years. So I like I like that you acknowledge that because I think sometimes I know that my clients can often get really down on themselves and I can get down on myself too. Like, oh my God, am I learning this again? Oh my God, am I here again? And so it's kind of iterative to get to this place of stuckness, right? Well, life is never from point A to point B. It's always like this. And, and it's, it's also a spiral, you know? Uh, so you figure out this part, but you're, you're going to hit another one as you, as you keep going and you keep moving up your, along your own path. Right. Well, so let's talk about this. What, tell us about what you do and who you help before we get started. So we know what your expertise is. All right. Well, I've been in business a long, long, long time, <laughs> <laughs> cut my teeth on marketing and graphic arts and things like that back in 1970s <laughs> with Michigan Farm Bureau when I was married to my first husband for 25 wow. years. I was a dairy farmer and um, started writing. I uh, was the first to establish a county newsletter for Farm Bureau in the entire United States with a with a fellow uh, farmer, um, ended up being on their farm and garden television show. <laughs> so I learned that backside. I was took spokesperson training with them. So that's where I got my start in actually professional writing and marketing. Um, over time, I became a certified guerrilla marketing coach, but 30 years after that term was coined by Jay Conrad Levinson, a lot of people don't understand what guerrilla marketing uh, means, what the philosophy was behind it. And basically it's just trying to get the biggest bang for your investment of time, money, and resources. Mm -hmm. Using the title purgatory relief coach for people who think marketing is hell is an example of guerrilla marketing. Mm -hmm. People like us coaches who have uh, experience in other areas of business and life, if you are that purgatory, if you're in that hell that you're really struggling with marketing and making it work for you, they understand what that term means. 100%, yes. 100% where certified guerrilla marketing coach sounds very warlike and antagonistic mm -hmm. and um, it's not me at all. I'm quirky and intuitive and, <laughs> and not a gorilla coach. <laughs> Matches not me. <laughs> yes. Yes. So tell me about the people who you work with. What's, what are they mainly struggling with? Well, for many, many years, I worked with corporate businesses, like I said, through Farm Bureau, th through agriculture. Um, I was married 25 years at that first time. So I had a lot of contacts there. I was an early adopter to the internet and worked with people with CompuServe. And uh, after 25 years, um, I unexpectedly got divorced. And nine years after that, I married my husband and got into hospitality and restaurant management because he's a, he's a professional chef. Um, now, my passion is working with home-based solopreneurs. Um, who find themselves stuck, stumped, or stalled trying mm. to rock their unique path to success. Uh, and I'm a firm believer that you have to figure out your path and follow it to the best of your ability. Glean from other people, but if you just try to walk in someone else's footsteps, 
footsteps or try to adopt someone else program and only do what they tell you to do, you're probably not going to be successful, especially if, if you're creative or intuitive, um, if you've got any smarts of your own. <laughs> Yeah, it's so true. I, I see so many people frustrated because they've they've done all the steps, they've bought the program, they've done all the steps and things still aren't working for them. Or there's the gurus, you kind of scroll through and you see this one size fits all thing. And I know that it's a marathon of, of synthesis, really, like mm -hmm. taking this piece and this piece and this piece that you like and, and making it work for you. But that kind of work can really burn you out and make you feel stalled and stuck exactly and so that's that's where you meet people and i teach a triple what i call a triple a approach it's um adopt the teachings of others the methods of others then adapt them to your own needs and then mm -hmm. adjust continually adjust according to where you are and what you want to accomplish Right. I think people just wish it was easier than that because the three A's that you just shared <laughs> require you to, you know, figure it out, assess, assess, assess. Well, and people of get afraid of making a decision that might be out of the norm that they're reading about the, the latest trend. And in marketing, I tell people, if you do not like being marketed to a certain way, or if you come across advertising uh, or promotions that are tweaked a certain way and they turn you off, do not feel obligated to use them in your own marketing because your followers probably don't like that either. Doesn't mean it, it it's just, a bad tactic. It just it means it's you. not right for your market and you. I just wrote an email about that last week to my list, which was all about like, if you don't like webinars that shove a sale down your throat, then don't do one, do one that's full of value, right? If you don't like sliding into somebody's DMs, like saying, hey girl, I just found a weight loss tea, then don't do that, right? You're not tuning in, I think. Yeah, there are a couple of marketing tactics that I have friends that swear by them, but you'll never see them on my website, the little <laughs> pop-up thing that says so-and-so just bought or signed right. up for this. You will never see that on mine because it annoys the heck out of me for yeah. a couple of reasons. So yeah, fine for them. Keep doing it. I'm not telling them not to do it. I'm just saying you're never going to see it on mine. Yes. Permission granted to try it yourself, right? Yes, exactly. <clears throat> All right. So let's talk about the people who are at that place where they're frustrated and they're kind of spinning around or circling the drain. They're at the edge. So how do we know what's the first step in knowing that we are at an edge? Uh, you're frustrated, you're overwhelmed, and you're likely really, really keeping busy with busy work that's not moving you forward in your business. But the number one thing to tell when you are at that edge is you are suddenly more afraid of staying where you are than mm. step, stepping forward into that scary unknown. So the thought there would be this sucks, but staying here is what I'm really scared of. I don't, I want this suckage to go away. Right, right. Okay. I'm a. I'm willing to fall flat on my face. I'm not afraid of failure. My problem was fear of success over years of being penalized for being successful in a mm -hmm. certain family dynamic I was in. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not afraid of failing, uh, but I was afraid of success. And it got to a point where in order to, re I choose to be happy. I think people have a choice about happiness. You can choose to be happy, mm -hmm. even if, all of the life circumstances are not exactly the way you'd like them, you can still be happy. And the end of my first marriage at 20, after 25 years, literally hinged on, I'm more afraid of staying stuck and being mm -hmm. Cinderella forever than risking it all and stepping forward into the unknown. I mean, I literally escaped in the middle of the night from a Wonderful. pretty scary situation. So wow. it, the, the light bulb for me and being at the edge was very clear at that moment. And I had to ask myself, if you stay, you have to be become what they want you to be. 
Mm-hmm. And I couldn't, I couldn't say yes to that. I just, right. that was worse than, than I whatever was me. ahead of you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. the very first thing in order to help us move forward and get out of this mm, spinning circling paradigm is to assess, okay, if I stay here, if I'm, a, if I'm here six months from now, or if I'm here a year from now, is that worse than the fear of what, whatever is ahead of me that I don't know? Yeah. And some, for some people, it does take them a long time to realize that they have been creeping up to that edge and backing away and creeping up to the edge. And for some people, when they reach that moment, they have choices to make. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get to that point and say, well, I don't have any choice. I'm stuck here. Mm, Being stuck is a choice. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, you know, I, I call the, um, w- the moment that you're talking about, it's like, there's two versions of hard where you are is hard. And then where you're going to get to is another, it's a, just a different hard path. But I always talk to my clients about on that second path, there's ease when you get to a certain point, if you just stay where you are, it's like, I kind of like have a fist, like, it's just going to punch you in the face if you stay where you are. <laughs> but there's ease on the other side if you are willing to move forward. And one of the reasons there is ease is because once you step forward, new opportunities open up that you never knew existed or didn't realize were there all along with the door wide open for you. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's a hard thing for people to see. So I just want to definitely acknowledge if you're at that step where you're trying to figure out, am I on the edge? Am I going to move forward? Am I going to stay where I am? It's, it's a hard place. So let's just acknowledge that. Right. And the other thing I want people to acknowledge is there is no one right path for everyone. I think everybody can rock their unique path, but there is no wrong path out there. And mm-hmm. people sit back waiting for the right moment, the right path, that guarantee <laughs> so that they'll be successful. I'm a published author. You know, I've got 15 books uh, published between 1986 and 2001 under Kathy Henderson, you know. Wow. I chose to back away from that particular mm-hmm. career at one time. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean it, my choosing another path was wrong doesn't mean that that path was the only path available to me there are many paths what i tell people is any path can be a great path for you you may make wrong choices in hindsight while you're on that path but the path itself was not the problem so people Mm. people come to me and say oh um i want to get published uh where where can you guarantee i'll get published I said, do you want to guarantee that you're going to get published or do you want to move forward? So some people literally want that guarantee. They want no risk. And I can point them to that. I always wanted to be rejected by the best and work my way down the publisher's list, not start mm, at the bottom. Right, that's to a great point. My way up. I wanted to be rejected by the best first. I love that. Yeah. Okay, so the second, the second thing that somebody needs to figure out is then what, when we know we're at the edge, what are our choices? So can you speak a little bit about that? So your choices are to decide you really don't want to move forward in what you thought you wanted to move forward. I have counseled many business people who thought they wanted a business and realized they don't want the responsibility of the business side of things. Mm -hmm. So they went back to working for someone else as a massage therapist or a graphic artist or whatever. And saying, I decided I don't want this is a legitimate choice. Mm -hmm. You're not failing anybody. Yeah, right. it's very freeing. Um, My sister lets me tell people that story. She was a massage therapist for a while, wanted to get out of working for someone else But when she got into doing it herself, she hated the marketing. She hated, there was so much about the business side and said, I just don't want this. And I said, then don't do it. Mm -hmm. It, That's a good, you know, that's a legitimate choice. The other choice is to say, I'm going to take imperfect action, but I'm stepping forward and I will tweak things along the way and figure things out as I go. Mm -hmm. I like to tell people that there are, two types of obstacles in our path. There are the obstacles that we know are there. I can be the queen of procrastination. 
I know all of the tricks and, and tools to get me past procrastination. And sometimes I don't take them. Okay. Procrastination for me is an obstacle. I know it exists. There are hidden barriers and those are a little harder to understand where they're coming from. Gay Hendricks in his book, The Big Leap, talks about hidden barriers yes. and that there are four main um, contributors to that. And it took a bit of internal exploration to find out what my hidden hmm. barriers were. And it took me a while to figure out I was really afraid, more afraid of success than I was of, of failure. Yeah. And then, okay, now that I know that, where am I self-sabotaging myself and what can I do to change that? Gotcha. So when you work with people, do you use those for kind of guideposts from Gay Hendricks to help people uncover them for themselves? Yeah, I work. It's like when I help someone edit their book. Before we get into any of the mechanics of writing, and I know you as a former teacher understand this, if the context is not there, Mm -hmm. all of the having all of the uh spelling correct and all the grammar correct and <laughs> and everything it's a waste of time Doesn't so matter. what my, one of my expertise is helping people figure out what really is the root cause that put them in the place of being stumped stuck or stalled yeah and once we know that then the marketing, then they're not a, so much afraid. It's find out it's really not marketing that they were afraid of. It was whatever was behind that fear. I have a similar story with some of my clients who think it's the marketing that's the problem. But what they realize is that if they're, it's very subconscious too. We have to kind of dig around to figure this one out. But this might resonate with some people. So I want to share it. Um, if your marketing is really good and it works, it will lead people to your sales page or your program, and you're gonna to have to have a call with somebody and say, this is how much my stuff costs and this is how we work together. And then you have to talk about money. And a lot of my clients don't really wanna talk about that. So they do all of this you know, obfuscation and sabotage with, with their marketing, and then they never have to have those sales calls. Exactly. exactly. And knowing that is very freeing. Like, oh, that's what I'm really afraid of. Right. And a lot of us hide behind, well, I only, only want to be of service to people. And the other one is if something's easy for us, we often don't see the value it has for other people for whom it's not as easy. So we devalue that yes. side of things. Yes. That's like if, if it's, if it's as easy for breathing for as like breathing is for us, why should we charge for it? Exactly. Who would pay for that? Oh, and oh, heaven help us if somebody says, well, um, you know, that didn't take you long to figure that out. How can you possibly charge me that much? And my answer to that one is my, my favorite dentist story. And it's uh, a friend went to a friend of his who was a dentist. And he said, I've got this bad tooth. What can you do about it? And his friend, the dentist said, well, uh, come into the office and I'll take a look at it. And if need be, we'll pull it out or, you know, we'll go rook out whatever it needs. And the guy, and the guy says, well, how much is this going to cost me? And the dentist quoted him his regular fee. And he said, well, how long is this going to take? And the dentist said about 15 minutes, you're charging that much for 15 minutes of work. And the dentist says, well, I could take longer. <laughs> <laughs> just root around in there for two hours. Would that feel better? <laughs> yeah. They, they discount the years we've put, put in to, yes. and the expense we've done to learn our trade as well as we have and to be That's able right. to help others through the That's obstacles right. that we've learned to navigate uh, ourselves. So true. So yeah. then once somebody realizes, okay, I'm at the edge, I need to make a decision. I understand I have some choices. Um, how do we actually leap forward because we're never quite ready. We always think we're waiting to be ready, but we're never, ever, ever ready. <laughs> if you're waiting for ready, you'll, you'll never push that button. You just, you have to be willing to go out. And I do have um, what I call the five leaps of faith mm -hmm. that you have to take. And I believe you have to take these consciously every day. And especially anytime you find yourself in that spiral, I'm at the edge. I something's got to change. I, I know that something has to change or I'm going to be stuck here forever. 
Okay. And it happens to the brightest, most successful of us as well. And the first thing I tell people is that you have to acknowledge your intuition because that's what's speaking to you. Tap, and tap, tap, I believe tap, tap, tap. it's like <laughs> tapping you on the shoulders. Exactly. I believe we are all born intuitive. I don't believe it's any special se sense that some are gifted with. I think what happens is some of us are more comfortable acknowledging that we have it and being able to read into it and put it to good use for mm -hmm. ourselves. But I believe everybody has it. There's a reason my company name is 56 Vive Services. It's the five regular senses plus the sixth one. Oh, I like it. <laughs> and that adds up to 11, which happens to be a master number in numerology. Uh, the easy answer was that is I changed my business name from Henderson PR and marketing to 56 five <laughs> services when I turned 56 years old. <laughs> nice, nice. That's the easy answer, right? And that's the easy. And then friends started pointing out, some of my more psychic friends started pointing out, like you realize the symbolic and it's like, no, I didn't. And then mm -hmm. I started thinking, it's like, yes, that's exactly why I did that. Nice. So number two is once you acknowledge it, mm -hmm. you have to learn how to trust it. And I teach a lot about trust, how to trust your intuition. And I teach intuition and how to acknowledge it and recognize and learn from it different than anybody else I know. Mm. I'm quirky that way. Um, something that's standard that other people teach, um, though not everybody, is there are three levels of intuition. There's the universal level where certain certain signs and symbols have a universal meaning. Water is a good example of that. It's an emotional energy, okay? Mm -hmm. Then there's a cultural ethnic level of intuition. The American flag does not mean the same thing internally to us emotionally that for us here in the United States and even within people in the United States as it does for say someone from the Middle East. Mm. The same thing with a snake. A snake it can be a cultural symbol. It's on the caduceus for medical, you know, um, right. and some right. people may see the healing powers of that. If you're highly uh, religious, especially in the Christian field, you may be afraid of snakes for Makes whatever sense, right? reason. But the most important level is your personal level of intuition. And those are learning to recognize the signs and symbols that have special meaning to you personally. So you have to understand what does the snake mean to me personally? I was a, a, a camp, summer camp director, um, not assistant director. I, you know, worked with snakes and <laughs> out when we're, you know, out in the, in the woods and stuff, snakes don't bother me. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other signs and symbols that, because of the frequency they come about, I've attached when this is how I'm feeling, or this is the element I'm seeing, or this is the smell that's coming through. I know what that translates to me personally. My great grandmother uh, had a favorite perfume. It was white shoulders mixed oh, yeah, with chantilly. <laughs> okay. When I smell that, it's my personal intuition to say you are in a dangerous environment but as long as you remain aware you will be safe i have wow. smelled it coming out of a business conference into like one of those big parking garage things and i i smell it i don't question that i go back and ask for an escort to my car that's being aware or i make yeah. sure that my car keys are in my hand and i check out through the windows and stuff before I get in. So learning to what those personal signs and symbols are for you, that helps you learn to trust it. Mm -hmm. Step three, the, the third leap is that you always have to be aiming for higher than you expect to reach. It's that reach for the stars because if you only reach the moon, you're still that much farther ahead. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Always reach farther than you think you can reach aim farther than you think you can reach. Number four, and I know you're going to like this one, is that you have to take action of some kind. 
you have to get out of your own way. And I look down and I literally tell the butterflies in my belly, guys, it's time to start flying in formation because we're moving Mm -hmm. forward. (laughs) It's almost like you get to that point with step four where you haven't been taking any action and you get so sick of yourself. Mm-hmm. Like you're just like, I can't, like, I can see it in my head or I'm so bothered by it, but I'm not taking action. It's like, you, you're almost sick of your own bullshit at that point. And it's not that we don't know what to do. Most of the time, especially with the people I work with, they know the marketing strategies. They know the marketing tactics that are supposed to work. They're just not doing them. I'm not the best at keeping in touch with my mailing list, but I'm still successful because I've decided, okay, that's just something that I'm, I prefer not to focus on. It's a great strategy. It's a great tactic for people to use, but I found I can work without doing that. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I I can't use that as a crutch. (laughs) I can't say, oh, my list is real small. Well, yeah, it is, but I'm still successful. So you you can't excuse away things. And a lot of the times, because we know what to do, where it's in our head, Um, in addition to the business side of things, I'm a Reiki master and a tapping Mm -hmm. practitioner, EFT tapping practitioner. And Mm -hmm. it's not enough to know what is wrong you have to this is where those hidden barriers finding out what's really is the problem that's keeping you from taking that step forward you know what the step is but you're not doing it so why aren't you doing it and for me i think um that one of those hidden barriers that keeps me from taking action is perfection like Mm -hmm. if i don't have it all like beautifully done and mapped out and like I I want it to look like somebody's chapter 27 versus my chapter one. And I'll never get to chapter 27 unless I just start taking some, you know, imperfect crappy action. Right. And you, you, because you, you already know that I love the emails that you sent and your way of presenting things. And that's why we get along so well, because we're kind of (laughs) speaking each other's language Um, to know it and to do it are two different things. I 100% agree. But I love that we're admitting it and we're talking about it and that this is like what you help people give themselves permission to just take some crappy action. Right. And understand that life is a journey. So crap will keep coming your way. (laughs) And what I tell people is your job is not to figure everything out so no more crap comes your way. Your job is to figure out what may come your way, recognize it more quickly so you can overcome it and move forward more quickly every time it happens. Yes, 100%. Yeah. So then what's the fifth and last one? The fifth is to start loving yourself. So easy to say, right? (laughs) Unless you love yourself enough to say, I'm worth it. I'm worth better and more than I've been giving myself permission Mm. to do. You know, I don't need to be perfect. A a lot of times, especially for coaches, a lot of times it's hard for us to admit to our clients that we struggle with something when, let me put it this way, I'm brilliant at marketing. I can help my, my clients all day, every day. I am my own worst marketing client. (laughs) (laughs) Right. It's not that I don't know what to do. It's just that I don't do it sometimes. <laughs> right, 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 right. And I had to get real comfortable with that and admitting mm-hmm. that and saying, look, and you, if you look at other people, you can see that, you know, look at some of your close friends and family members and people that you admire, and then look at their histories and their biographies and see, oh, the things they overcame, they struggled with to get to where they were, you know? Yes, so true. There's a bonus sixth leap. Oh, okay. After you learn to love yourself, you have to start believing in yourself. And Mm. that really, that takes you from taking that step forward to being willing to close your eyes and jump. Yeah. With that leap of faith, yep. Kat, this is so helpful because there's so much permission in what you're saying and there's so much Mm -hmm. 
kindness in what you're saying, but my favorite thing is there's no one right way to do any of it. No, so absolutely. What I know is that we all could use some support in doing this stuff. It's very hard to take all of the steps that you outlined today. I mean, you've really outlined the what and the why, but the how is the stuff that really keeps us from actually taking action. So um, do you take private clients now? Can people work with you one-on-one -on -one or even in a group? I do. I work with groups and I work with private private clients. I do limit the number I work with at any one time. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something I learned to be mm -hmm. able to love myself and spend time with myself and my family. Yes. But I have three offers and people are welcome to take up any of those offers. Uh, to I know you have a, yep. I was going to say, I know you have a, a couple of free calls where yep. people can just learn more about you. Yep. There's a good, a quick chat with me, which is basically a get acquainted call. Mm -hmm. There is a complimentary breakthrough strategy session. If you, somebody needs help, wants help figuring out where their stumbling block might be. Mm -hmm. And uh, both of those come with no strings. We don't talk that these are not pre sales, sales calls. calls. These right. are real coaching calls. So if you think, yes. well, I may want to work with her, but I don't know about her style or whatever, choose one of those. Right. And then there's a jumpstart coaching special um, where people can get two real strategy coaching calls for me. There's a beginner one where we figure out what's got you stumped, stuck, or stalled. Mm -hmm. And then a follow-up to see if you've been able to successfully move forward. And if you're still struggling, what the next step might be. Nice. Those are, those are great. If you have enjoyed listening to Kat and everything she says resonates with you, I encourage you get on a call. It is not scary to get on a call with somebody like Kat because she's already told you there's going to be no sales call at the end of it. Um, but it really can just, just having somebody outside of yourself, see things for you. My clients say it all the time. When we get to an aha moment for them, they're like, I can't believe I didn't see this for myself. And I'm like, how, how are you supposed to? We have so many blinders and stories that keep us from, from clarity. So I want to encourage people to get on the phone and connect with you. So I will put your link to, to connect with you uh, in the notes and in the comments below. I appreciate that. And Jen, I know you tell people this. I tell people this. You, if you want to be a coach, you have to be willing to be coached by someone else. Yeah. <laughs> it's and, a really vulnerable thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it is. There's always somebody that can bring insight to what we're struggling with because it's not enough to know what the problem is. Sometimes we need that other perspective, that accountability to get out of our own way. Yes. So if you feel like you're at the edge and everything Kat said, with, said resonates with you, Take time to go back through all of the steps that she's outlined and then assess, can I do this on my own or might I need some support? And if you do, I, I highly recommend Kat. She's wonderful and, and in integrity. I can't, I just want to really, like, I think you're just in such good integrity. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. You're so welcome. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. I appreciate you being here, taking the time to listen to our content because I know there's a lot of stuff out there you could consume. So thanks for being here to consume this. Thank you, Kat, for the time that you took and sharing your expertise too. My pleasure, Jen. I come back in a heartbeat. <laughs> Thank you. I'll probably have you back on. We'll probably talk about something else about marketing because there's so much to unpack. Yeah. All right, Kat, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Wonderful. Thank you, Kat. That was great. There's so much good information. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have the bullet points um, that you gave? If you did, I can put them into, um, um, what is the word I want to use here? Oh, when I, when my VA uses these videos on Facebook, what she does is while you're talking, she transcribes what you're saying. So mm -hmm. it could, um, she could use the, she could use the, your, your bullet points if you wanted her to, or she could just like do it from the listening, but I don't how know about, if you, how you feel about sharing that. I have that. I'll just, oh, I'll just, I'll just scan that in and send that to you. It's got the six leaps. You know what? It, no, don't take the time to do it. Cause she can just listen and, and do it that way. It'll, that'll right. be fine. So don't, don't worry about that. I didn't know if you had it all typed out. Um, <laughs> thank you no, so I've much. I've been I using this it. since, um, 